Let's go. The truth, the truth, set, the truth set you free. Set you free. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. What's up, DK? Awesome. So let's get into, well, now you can see what I do. You see me jump on Will's show a lot, and uh, I've been taking a little break from mine, but I had to jump on with this today. I got some other content coming up, but, uh, you know, what, what can I say? I needed a little rest, uh, and now it's game time, bitches. So let's go. I'm Lynn Packer with the 11th I really like this guy, of my YouTube video way. series on Operation Underground Railroad. Let's get into it. In this edition... The OUR criminal investigation expands. Heavy duty. Here are the headlines. Let's go. Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings Ooh. says his criminal investigation is vibrant and productive, that his investigators are dealing with a cascade of evidence and witnesses. The FBI has been working the case. Officially, an ooh, FBI ooh, spokesperson ooh. told me she will neither confirm nor deny. Let me any just pause this just for one Tim second. Oh, you are okay because I have been, I have been, uh, harassed, threatened. Uh, pretty much the people that have been <laughs> that have been attacking me for putting not only this story but other things that I do. Um, all I can say is. Uh, fuck you, <laughs> okay? Because here it is. All you people that have been looking and telling me that I don't know Shane, he's a great guy. That, okay, well, guess what? The FBI have arrived. And so many different angles to this investigation. I just, you know, if anybody looks at something just because somebody else likes it or says it's a good thing, then you're not looking into it very deeply. I always just smell the rat with this guy. And uh, as I dig into it, you know, lo and behold, we have Lynn Packer. So let's keep going. Hear what he has to say. I'm going to interrupt as little as possible this time. Or Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. The Salt Lake District Attorney's Office has met with Rawlings and his investigators and is thinking about weighing in. In this report, former OUR Rehab Director Ed Smart breaks his silence. OUR's Chief Financial Officer Tevia Ware quits and forms her own anti-sex trafficking charity, but still brags about the tens of millions she administered for OUR. Tim Ballard, while under criminal investigation, contemplates running against Mitt Romney in four years for the U.S. Senate. And Mormon head apostle M. Russell Ballard who is suspected of secretly helping kickstart OUR financially, promotes his son's and son-in-law's business ventures out of his church administrative building office. I'll begin with Ed Smart speaking out. Smart, of course, gained notoriety as the father of kidnap victim Elizabeth Smart. Looking back at Smart's role with OUR, he was OUR's aftercare director in 2014 and 2015. Elizabeth Smart joined the OUR board with great fanfare. OUR planned to merge with the Elizabeth Smart Foundation. It never fully materialized. Before OUR became an IRS-approved 501c3 charity, it solicited tax-deductible donations through the Smart Foundation. In 2014, Ed Smart was among OUR's highest profile figures. Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes, Tim Ballard, himself, and his daughter, Elizabeth. OUR's website trumpeted the purported OUR Smart Foundation merger, showing that Elizabeth Smart was put on the OUR Board of Governors and that Ed Smart was named Director for Prevention and Rehabilitation. Ed Smart also spoke at OUR events, did news interviews, as reflected in this TV news story excerpt. His daughter was kidnapped, tortured, and sexually assaulted when she was only 14. Now, Ed Smart is on a mission to rescue children from sex trafficking. When we can help our children understand, here is a line in the sand, and this, re this represents what is and isn't acceptable. And when that line is crossed, regardless of who it is, here's what you can do. While the Smart OUR union was highly publicized, OUR did not announce the breakup, Elizabeth Smart leaving the board and Ed Smart quitting his job. Looking back, Ed Smart told me he is totally disillusioned with OUR and Tim Ballard. He said, 
When I heard Tim make comments that I felt were not true, I became even more disillusioned. I made proposals about aftercare that were not being taken seriously. He said, it hurts me to see people pour money into all you are when I feel it's very undeserving. One thing I would say about Tim and his organization. For those of you, uh, money making for those of you who haven't checked in and said hello, let me know where you're uh, tuning in from. Would love to hear from you. Thank you. Machine. Smart told me he was in the Dominican Republic during the bungled Guardi rescue mission. I reported on the failed rescue in my YouTube episode 10. You might also check out the Vice World News report online titled OUR's Blundering Overseas Missions. In summary, Tim Ballard was certain they would find Gesno Marty's kidnapped son, Gardy. Ballard was being guided by Utah psychic Janet Russon. Smart said he was in the Dominican Republic's capital, Santo Domingo, working on OUR aftercare matters. When all of a sudden, Tim Ballard told him about a mission to rescue kidnap victim, Gardy Marty. Psychic Russin said Gardy was being held in a slave labor camp near the DR Haitian border. Ballard and other operatives came to Santo Domingo from Haiti. And from there, the quickly assembled rescue team would depart to a remote location near the border. Before departing Santo Domingo to rescue Gardy, five team members went to the LDS temple to pray about the mission. They also visited a site in the city where LDS apostle M. Russell Ballard rededicated the country for Mormon missionary work. The dedication site is shown in this video clip from an LDS church promotional video. Latter-day Saint missionaries began sharing the church's message in this Caribbean country just over 30 years ago. Beginning with only 26 members in one small congregation, church membership in the Dominican Republic has grown to more than 110,000. M. Russell Ooh, Ballard of the Quorum Atlanta. of the Twelve Apostles was in the Dominican Atlanta Republic in, in 1978 when missionary work formally began. He returned to the Caribbean nation in November 2009 to visit with local members if I promoted, and, it would, it would and to reflect the same thing. on the church's progress. A there. few people that just aren't talking because they just want to watch. Fond memories. Ed Smart says Tim Ballard took the Guardi rescue team Engage. to the Santo Domingo okay. location where Russell Ballard had dedicated the Dominican Republic for missionary work. At the site, according to Smart, Tim Ballard called Elder Ballard on the phone to discuss OUR's Guardi rescue mission. Ed Smart says the expense of the failed Guardi rescue mission. Ed Smart, the father of Elizabeth Smart. That night after alleged. the mission was a failure, Ballard told oh. Smart and other team members, Kidnapping. don't say anything about it. Don't Smart say anything about it. Asked to sign non -disclosure agreement. See, this is one of the main thing that bothers me about this whole business is this thing about this Guardi, okay, about Guardi. The kid, they sell the hats. They have the shows, they have the pleading and the fundraising. Still no Guardi, okay? How is it that all of these millions and millions and millions of dollars, they can't find somebody yet? Somebody comes out of jail and rats on somebody? Man, that dude is dead in like a week, if that. But they can't find this kid? It doesn't make any sense to me, all right? This makes no fucking sense, Tim Ballard. Okay, I'm sorry to say it that way, but not really. uh, this is this is this is effed up because this has to do with people again being effed around by a grifter who will take your money. There's a reason why they're investigating, and it's not good. And if you're watching here, like, oh no, look at him, he's bad mouthing Tim Ballard. I'm not bad mouthing Tim Ballard. I'm trying to fucking show you something. And I'm really sick and fucking tired of people who just listen to stuff like this and uh, just take it blindly and then yell at me for, ta for talking about this stuff. Well, let me tell you something. This is the fucking facts, all right? This guy is under investigation. I'm not investigating him, okay? But I'm going to talk about this because this is bullshit, this stuff about people getting all hyped on these fucking movies that they make and the videos and the pull at your heartstrings, pull, pull at your heartstrings while you pull out your fucking wallet. Okay. You know, 
I've talked about this a lot and, and the relentless uh, beating that I've taken from these fucking uh, the beating that I have taken from some of these people who still back this guy. Now look, is he has he been proven guilty of anything? Not yet. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, that's a 30 minute uh, comment delay. By the way, if there is anybody new, I did forget about that. That is a setting that is on here. You gotta hang out for 30 minutes. That's just how we figure out if you're here to um, roll or troll. You know what I'm saying? And it looks like you're here rolled in, Max. So welcome, Massachusetts. I appreciate it. This is a, an impromptu thing I just jumped on. So I'm, I'm getting mass reported by a bunch of people who don't like me putting out this shit. So my stuff is shadow banned everywhere. Not because I'm saying anything wrong or doing anything wrong. It's because I'm putting out something that's right. And the people that are doing the wrong shit will send their little dickheaded minions to uh, try and shut me down. So they can fuck off. Welcome. Hi. You know, I'm a good fucking person. I want people to know this because people are getting ripped off. Old ladies, people who are vulnerable, mentally ill. They're giving money that they shouldn't be giving to these people. Okay? I mean, if I was going to take a big old, like, you know, I could have gone in and been like, you know, Tony Q., and done that whole shit and fuck with everybody and taking your money and run a big old scam with Intel and all that shit. You know, a lot of people could have me and will. Oh my God. If me and will put together a show, put on a couple of anonymous masks and, and start talking about just some military jingle, jangle, jingle. Okay. Jesus, we would have crushed it. And by the way, go over and support will over a cold beer confessional. Uh, support Lynn Packer here. Um, our, our buddy Will is uh, is in a is in a pickle, so please go to Cold Beer Confessional. Uh, donate to his uh, GoFundMe uh, and go read it. All right, go check it out. It's a Cold Beer Confessional on Instagram and on YouTube. I appreciate it, guys. He's a friend of mine. He's one of the Griff Busters, and uh, he needs you to share his information. If you can't donate, uh, then don't, but do share it. Uh, share it with people who are in the military. Uh, this is a guy who, who 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 put his life on the line so that we could do stupid shit like this uh, in the United States uh, and elsewhere. If he didn't fight for your country, he certainly fought for your freedom, no matter where you are in the world. So go to Cold Beer Confessional and give him um, give him some love. All right. Here we go. Might say something he said, and. Ballard did not want it coming out. They were using a psychic. And don't tell him I said anything. All right? Just, just don't tell him I said anything. Let's turn to a new development since my last report in March, Op-Ed 10. He Over doesn't like getting help, but we got to help him. Out, so Tevia Ware now, here's Tevia Ware, formed her own child rescue the CFO. Why is that significant? Tevi Ware was OUR's main money person. She played the most important financial role among OUR's nepotistic Here's officers the money and lady. Directors. And what did she do? What did Tevi Ware go and do? She went and started her own human traffic, child trafficking organization. Why do you think she did that? Ma'am, I just want to throw my fucking desk out the fucking window. I mean, do you get it? Do you get it? Do we understand? She went and started another human trafficking organization. Why? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a fucking cash cow. That's why. Because people are suckers. And they, and, they, and they give money to the wrong fucking people. I'm pissed off today. All right. What's with his comment? Jim Ballard was president and CEO. He's had various titles over the years. Tevia Ware, CFO, sister-in-law, Catherine Ballard's sister. Yes, which has good... Uh, Julianne Ballard-Blake, a director the gaming. and a sister. Todd Reynolds, director, brother-in-law. He married Shauna Ballard. Mark Reynolds, director. Look Todd's at how they're all related. And Look Emily at this Ballard nepotistic Evans, organization that pays sister. itself 
Evans, by the for way, nothing. has repeatedly declined my requests for comments and interviews. OUR's financial oversight headquarters was Ware's rural Cedar City residence. Ware lives in a farmhouse off a dirt road in rural Cedar City. Until she resigned earlier this year, it was OUR's financial nerve center, where, at least in theory, Ware would manage budgets, make financial plans, and oversee accounting. Her salary in 2019, when OUR last reported, was $127,000. Ware also made appearances for OUR, making many of the same unproven claims about child sex slavery that her brother-in-law makes. But she lacks Tim Ballard's messaging skill, as in this example where she's trying to explain the significance of OUR's never-ending search for the missing Guardy Marty. Uh, for example, there was one uh, boy that was born in the U.S. Um, you saw in that clip, it was Haiti. I don't know if you could recognize that area, but um, he was, his family was in Haiti at the time when he was kidnapped. And so while he was a U.S. citizen, it allowed the U.S., it allowed him as an agent to pursue the case for a certain amount of time. Um, it had its limitations, especially once they had gone through several, um, you know, he was sold out of one orphanage and into a different um, orphanage and then gone from there, uh, just, you know, w w our tax dollars are limited. We have to um, the what? be selective in, in how uh, we use those funds. Whoa. Where's resignation is the most significant among many other rats fleeing OUR sinking ship. It's because of the importance of CFOs and because she's Tim Ballard's sister-in-law. She founded a new OUR-like child rescue nonprofit Coaction Global. Two others Co -action who already Global. abandoned ship joined her new charity. Coaction's website touts Ware's previous work at OUR without ever saying Operation Underground Railroad. She brags about the money OUR took in. Her website says that during. Look at these numbers. Okay, first of all, she hasn't done anything else. Uh, of, of any merit or, or great uh, numerical value like at OUR. Look at these fucking numbers, okay? I can't believe this. You know? She has facilitated growth from 900,000 to more than 38.7. 38,700,000 with net assets exceeding 60 million. She's talking about OUR. So that fucking Where is the fucking money? Yes, it is all donations. That's all they live on. They don't have any other way of getting anything other than fundraising. That's how they make their money. This is all donations, you guys. This is almost 40 million fucking dollars. And then the net assets exceeding 60 million, which means there's another fucking slush fund somewhere. I'm so sick of these people, man. Like, you know, nobody says anything. They're just like, oh, they save children. They save kids, so they must be okay. They save the children. They're all right. Seriously, but we're going to take $38 million. Uh, seriously, you could, you could do a lot of, of, you could find a lot of people with $38 million. Okay. I will tell you right now with this kid, yo, give me, give me a hundred grand. All right. I'll find this kid in two fucking days. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People are so dumb. I'm referring to, but not naming OUR. All at the same facilitated time. facilitated growth from $990,000 to more than $38,700,000 in annual revenue with net assets exceeding $60 million. As OUR CFO, she was responsible for managing the finances that are now under scrutiny by criminal investigators. 
CFOs of companies under criminal investigation are often target. As an example, Donald Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg is under threat of criminal indictment if he does not flip on Trump, rat Trump out, and provide testimony against him. However, in this case, Ware may have already flipped on her brother-in-law. Speculation persists. She was one of the first insiders to turn on Ballard, providing testimony and records. The two main partners with their new venture, John Lines and Carlos Rodriguez, have already quit OUR and are known to be cooperating with the criminal probe. I asked Ware in emails we exchanged about her flipping on Ballard. In her reply, she offered no comment and declined an interview. That's a yes, allegedly. Neither Ware nor Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings will comment on whether Ware has been given immunity from prosecution in exchange for her testimony and records. Utah MLM doTERRA, which withdrew its financial support for OUR, now backs Ware's child rescue. Okay, so doTERRA, uh, doTERRA, excuse me, I'm sorry, the, the MLM doTERRA, <coughs> they made some kind of colloidal silver, <coughs> uh, some kind of drink or something like that. So some kind of colloidal silver, you know, scam drink. A lot of these things come out of Utah. Let me tell you something, y'all. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, fuck with anybody's religion or anything, but, you know, a lot of stuff comes out of Utah that's very scammy. And um, I have worked with companies that are based in Utah. I have worked jobs with Mormon supervisors. My experience was that you only got to a certain level unless you were Mormon. And that's my personal experience, okay? That is my experience uh, at which I have just turned into an opinion, I suppose. I don't know, it's an op-ed. Everything you say. Here we go. You venture. It's likely doTERRA would have wanted some assurance before backing her charity that Ware does not face possible prosecution should any criminal charges ensue. Another person who should have wanted assurance Ware had no chance of being charged is the person she picked to chair her board of directors. Coaction's board chairman is the former executive director of the Utah Department of Commerce, Francine Gianni, where she was over consumer what? protection, responsible for rooting See, out... See, I don't, I don't watch these... Would she All the way through, I just watched pieces. If there was any chance where Lines or Rodriguez could be swept up in a criminal investigation? I don't know. Probably she not. She would not do an interview. In fact, all Coaction board members and officers declined interviews. I did ask about Gianni's role in my email exchange with Ware. I wrote, Francine Gianni's role as board chairperson is especially relevant, giving her previous job protecting consumers from frauds and scams. Wow. Her division of consumer protection oversees Utah nonprofit registrations. As one example, her division did revoke the license held by the Utah nonprofit National School Foundation that I reported on more than a decade ago. But that was only after its promoters were criminally charged in Minnesota not Utah, and after the charity collapsed into bankruptcy. It may be noteworthy who replaced Ware as OUR's chief financial officer. Simon Brewer replaced Ware as CFO in February. I reported earlier on Brewer's previous job as CFO for the Utah Penny Stock Venture oh, this is Predictive a gem. Technology Group. Predictive had run into trouble with the SEC regarding claims it made for its COVID-19 rapid test. CEO Brad Robinson had a previous run-in with the SEC over alleged false claims. See, there's another one of these lowering snake oil products. products. Former Utah Senator and high-profile OUR supporter Orrin Hatch is on Predictive's board. Orrin Hatch. As shown on its website. Really? A senator. Well, well, well. Predictive CEO Brad Robinson is alleged to have falsely claimed. 
what the fuck is a U.S. senator doing on the board of a penny stock company? <laughs> ...that a Chinese manufacturing partner received Chinese government approval to distribute its antibody tests. He was previously sued over claims of non-compliant marketing of a medical cholesterol-lowering algae water product was accused of falsely stating that one of his products would be pitched by Dr. Oz and the Gates Foundation. And he was previously charged by the SEC over allegations of issuing false press releases. Predictive Technology partners with the Utah, Florida company, Wellgistics LLC for distribution. Wellgistics and its CEO, Brian Norton, as I previously reported, has ties to Operation Underground Railroad and Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. Let's not forget that Sean Reyes uh, is also under investigation. It seems like uh, it seems like there's a bit of uh, trouble in paradise, if you will. I reported in Op-Ed 10 that Norton's name appears on a whiteboard illustration that Tim Ballard drew. It shows Brian Norton's Now, in an earlier episode of this, uh, I believe it was part one or two the uh, on, on my series, uh, because of the number. Uh, you have this whiteboard drawing from a meeting that someone had drawn out and laid out the corporate structures, uh, something they probably did not want people to see with Ballard's Slave Stealers television series project. More TV shows. One source claims Norton is paying Ballard $9,000 a month for rights to participate in that venture. Of course. I also reported that Mormon Church Apostle Russell Ballard, according to the whiteboard, is also a Slave Stealers partner. Here, Russell Ballard is pictured Russell with Ballard. Mack and Tim Ballard, both covenant adherents. Uh, these are church elders. These are Mormon church elders. When you use a church elder in anything that you do to raise money and you do not deliver and it is somehow fraudulent, that is also called affinity fraud by using the church to help your organization make money is fraud at that because they're very powerful in Utah. Okay? And a Mormon elder, if you're in the LDS and a Mormon elder talks to you about uh, giving some money to something, uh, you know, you better fork it over, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, or else you get the old uh, you get the old candy cane in the hoo ha. The old candy cane. <laughs> Give you the old candy cane, boy. You know that suck it sharp for you. Tim Ballard at the whiteboard meeting implied that Russell Ballard also has a financial a interest in the book's spinoff television series. I also reported in Op-Ed 10 that Russell Ballard's name appears on the whiteboard illustration. I had asked Mormon Church Media Relations about Ballard's investment along with another general authority. The other general authority I wrote in an email, there may be more than one, who was said to have invested in an OUR-related entity is Robert Gay, whose business partner, Steve Young, is a well-known OUR supporter. I made a direct request to Elder Gay's office for confirmation and or comment, and he also declined to return my call. The Mormon Church spokesman declined comment. For more detail about Russell Ballard's business history, see my YouTube video, Part 6, posted in December. The next section of this video report is about Russell Ballard's alleged use of his church position to steer investments to his son and son-in-law's businesses in a fashion similar to their alleged involvement in financially backing Tim Ballard and Operation Underground Railroad. It's about the Mormon Church's Kirtland, Ohio project. I interviewed Utah mega project developer Mark Jensen about his help finding donors for the Mormon Church project in Kirtland, Ohio and how that fundraising is connected to Ballard family business ventures. 
This section is about Mark Jensen's fundraising endeavor with Russell Ballard and meeting his son, Craig, and son-in-law, Brad. But first, who is Mark Jensen? He was in the news five years ago. Mark Jensen was at the center of criminal charges against former Utah Attorneys General Mark Shurtleff and John Swallow in the 2014-2017 timeframe. Charges against Shurtleff were dropped and Swallow was acquitted at trial. Jensen, in a somewhat related matter, was charged and held in jail until his trial in 2015. A jury found him innocent. Before all that, earlier in the decade, Jensen became involved in the Kirtland Project. It all began when Russell Ballard asked Mark Jensen to come to his office at 47 East South Temple, the church's main administration building, to discuss a calling of sorts. Jensen made a note of it. Ballard asked Jensen to bring well-to-do LDS donors who were able to make minimum $50,000 donations to Ballard's office to finalize the transactions. The money would be used to enhance LDS church properties near the Kirtland, Ohio Temple to rebuild key landmarks, build a new visitor center, and improving infrastructure, such as roads. The landmarks are near the Kirtland Temple, owned by the Community of Christ Church. Faithful Mormons believe Jesus Christ appeared there as well as Moses and the prophets Elijah and Elias. At its 1836 dedication, many in the congregation had visions, saw angels, and spoke in tongues. Russell Ballard would refer to it as a great Pentecostal outpouring. So, what happened when Jensen and prospective meetings, Elder Ballard, and 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 also consider investing with his son Craig Ballard and son-in-law Brad Brower? Give me them snakes. Subsequent meetings were set up at their offices in Farmington, next to a facility where powders and drinks, that is, nutritional supplements, are formulated for various multi-level marketing ventures. As an example, one of several Kirtland donors who Jensen says invested in the Ballard family enterprise was Mormon billionaire Gene Yamagata, handled by Yamagata's CFO, David Sr. Yamagata Jensen claims what? Ballard fired him from his calling after Jensen and at least one of the Kirtland donors expressed concern about the propriety of linking church donations to investments with Ballard's family. But Jensen says after his termination, he was re-engaged, but under the direction of two other apostles, Henry Eyring and Jeffrey Holland. Jensen says the fundraising continued. I asked LDS Church Media Relations for interviews and a response. They declined. Well, 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 what did you think they were going to do? All right, everybody. That is part eight for you. We're going to come back a little bit. Make sure you're liking and sharing these. I really appreciate it, guys. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, all the goodies. And please follow my new page on Instagram, Crypto Cobra Kai. So I am taking you uh, to another level. I have a lot of knowledge of crypto mining and cryptocurrency, and I would love to share it with you there. So follow me on Crypto Cobra Kai. I have some free offers there for you. And uh, if you want to, again, take it to another level and figure out some really great passive income, that is not special to you. And uh, I'm not selling you nothing. Okay? So that's it. You want to go and check it out? It's your pocketbook. You want to make it fatter? You go over Crypto Cobra Kai. I am not a financial advisor, and they are for entertainment purposes only. We have to say that. You know, Who's, Who really is a financial advisor anyway? What, the guys that go up on Wall Street and uh, spend their money on a bunch of cocaine and prostitutes? Oh, they're financial experts, really? Okay. Just because they have a, a particular piece of paper on it, they, they spend their money on blow. If you spend your money on drugs, honestly, if you spend your money on drugs or any kind of vices, hookers, uh, whatever it is, you shouldn't be giving financial advice to anybody. Okay. So financial advisor is such a weird term. Like, I know how to make money, right? 
I don't want to give anyone financial advice, but you know, I like to spend money like a, like a, like a, like it's going out of stock. So my idea is to make sure that everybody could key in on some of these uh, free things. So check them out. A lot of cool stuff going on in the crypto world. I just nerd out on the technology. That's what I really like about it. And there's some great ways to make some passive income. So uh, make sure you get with it because you have to get with all that digital currency stuff because it is the future. So until next time, speaking of the future, thank you so much for joining me here today on the Veritas Machine. We are going to see you next time, ladies and gentlemen. So like, share. Until then, full send. The truth, the truth, set the truth, set you free, set you free. In an age of universal deceit, Telling the truth, Telling the truth. Is, a revolutionary act. is a revolutionary act. Once again, thank you everybody for coming and joining me. Thanks, Rivet. Thanks everybody for coming out. You can always take these, copy them, paste them, send them out on your cell phone to people. I don't know. Oh. And again, thank you so much for joining. Until next time. Full sandbag.